In this lecture, we're going to cover the topics of host listener and host binding. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to respond to output events that occur on the host element the directive is attached to. And you're also going to know how to manipulate the host element by binding to its input properties. Now, in the previous lecture, we created our first directive, CC card hover, which simply turned the background color gray for every element it's attached to. But as the name of the directive implies, we need a way of detecting if the user is hovering over the host element. And Angular makes this easy with the host listener decorator. This is a function decorator that accepts an event name as an argument. And when that event gets fired on the host element, it calls the associated function. So if we go into our directive class and I add a function called on hover, which just calls window alert and which pop up essentially, I then decorate this function with a new decorator called host listener. And like everything, we need to import this in. And we pass as the first parameter to host listener, the name of the event that we want to listen to. So we want to listen to the mouse over event. And specifically, it's going to listen to the mouse over event on the host element, on the element the directive is attached to. So it's actually going to listen for the mouse over event on this div element, the joke one here, the card. So let's run the application and make sure it's working. And now when I hover over the joke, an alert pops up with the text hover. But we don't want to show a pop-up. We actually want to hide and show the punchline. So in our on hover function, let's first grab a reference to the punchline element. And actually, instead of on hover, I'm going to call it on mouse over. Now we grab a reference to the punchline element by going through the native element on the element that which we injected into the constructor. So I'm gonna say let punchline equal this. So on the native element, it has a function called query selector and we can pass the query selector a CSS matching rule and we wanna to match to the class card text because that's the class that the punchline is wrapped with. And then we store that reference to punchline. In fact, let's call it punchline L so we know it's an element. And then again, we use our renderer and we want to set the display of this element to block. So we call this style. we pass it the punchline element which we just extracted from our native element here. And then we wanna set the display to block on that element. Now display block shows something, but only when you use display none to hide it in the first place. So to begin with, to make this work, we need to hide our punchline using by setting the display style to none. Instead of binding to the hidden property here, we now want to set to none. So now we're using the shortcut style syntax to set the style of our p tag. The display style, we're gonna set to none. And then when we hover over the element, because it has a CC card hover directive attached to it, it's then going to set the display to block, which is gonna show the uh, the punchline. Now also, let's also remove the button because we don't need it anymore. So now if I run the application, now when I hover over the joke, it shows the punchline just like that. 
But as well as showing the punchline on a mouse over event, we also want to hide the punchline on a mouse out event. And to do that, we just add another function to our card harbor directive. And we just listen to the mouse out event and just do the opposite of what we just did. So I create a function called on mouse out. I listen via the host listener directive. I listen to the mouse out event on the host element. I then get the same punchline element and I then set the display to none. And actually, let's get rid of setting the background color to gray as well. And now if we run this, now when I hover over the card, it shows the joke. When I hover out of the card, it removes the punchline, sorry. So when I hover over the card, it shows the punchline. When I hover out of the card, it removes the punchline. So as well as listening to output events from the host element, a directive can also bind to input properties on the host element with the host binding decorator. So this directive can change the properties of the host element, such as the list of classes that are set on the host element, as well as a number of other properties. And using the host binding decorator, a directive can link an internal property to an input property on the host element. So if the internal property on the directive changed, the input property on the host element would also change. So to do this, we first need something. We need a property on our directive, which we can use as a source for binding. So we'll create a Boolean called is hovering and in our mouse over and mouse out functions, we'll set this to true and false accordingly. So we create our is hovering property on our directive. I've set it to be a Boolean and I've defaulted it to false. And then in our mouse over function, I set it to true. And then in our mouse out function, I set it to false. Now we need to link this source property, this is hovering property to an input property on the host element. And we do this by decorating our is hovering Boolean with the host binding decorator. Now to use host binding, we need to import it. So let's import it first. Again, it's part of Angular core. And then let's decorate our property using it. Now the host binding decorator takes one parameter and that's the name of the property on the host element, which we want to bind to. So if you remember, you can use the alternative ng class syntax by binding to the class dot class name property. So let's add the card outline primary class to the host element when the is hovering Boolean is true. So let's pass to the host binding decorator card, sorry, not card should be class class dot card outline primary. So this is the property on the host element that we want to change every time the is hovering property on our directive changes. Now, if you remember with the class property, if it's true, it will add this class to the element. If it's false, it will remove this class to the element. And this is a Twitter bootstrap class. And it just provides an outline, a different colored outline for our card component. So now if I run the application, and now when we hover over a joke, as well as showing the punchline, we're also adding that card outline primary class. And if you can see, that's actually setting the outline color to blue. So you'll see that again in this one and in this one. So in summary, by using the host listener and host binding decorators, we can both listen to output events from our host element, and also bind to input properties on our host element as well. In the next lecture, we will cover how to provide inputs and configuration to our directives so that they can be easily reused.